Hola a todas, todo. Uh, me llamo Louis Richard Tremblay. Uh, I will speak in English now. Uh, uh, so just before I go, just to get a, a, to get a sense of who you are, it's like who in the this room considers themselves as storytellers? Uh, <laughs> okay, designers or visual artists? Okay, great. Uh, programmers or just one? Uh, uh, festival programmers, more like, okay, all right, so who, what else could I ask, like a uh, student, all right, so I'm going to talk a, a, a little about, about myself now, so my, my name is Louis-Richard Tremblay, uh, I'm a, a producer in the interactive studio at the National Film Board of Canada, uh, and today I'm going to go over a number of, of uh, projects uh, bef and before that uh, I will just give you a glimpse of uh, the National Film Board of Canada, where it comes from uh, and where uh, the, the story of, of, the, the, of the board uh, led us to the interactive works that we do today. So the National Film Board started uh, in 1939. This is John Grierson. He was the founder of the National Film Board. Uh, he used to be a cinematographer, and he was leading uh, the first years uh, at the National Film Board, basically producing war movies to enroll young Canadians into Second World War. Uh, so since the beginning, it's all about engagement. In 1941, uh, he hired uh, this guy, another Scotsman, uh, John Grierson is from Scotland, uh, which is Norman McLaren, uh, which still, still drive pretty much uh, everything. He's a big inspiration for everyone in the studio. He used to say that Les Frères Lumière did not invent cinema. Cinema is always reinventing itself going along. So this is how we feel into the interactive uh, production also. He used to work with musicians, all sorts of field. In 1958, uh, National Film Board created Cinema Verité, um, where they synced uh, live sound to live image capturing. 1967, uh, Colin Lowe, the guy in the middle, and two of his uh, close collaborators were already uh, exploring uh, buildings and creating la uh, labyrinths and playing with numerous uh, big screens uh, and, play, uh, and uh, using all sorts of different ways of storytelling to create a sense of, of the world because it was for the World, world Fair in, in Montreal. Uh, last week ended a tribute to that uh, work where we rebuilt uh, in the art of uh, Montreal uh, a new e interpretation of the same images of that time. Back to 1979, uh, the first computer movie uh, was created on a, a big computer at that time that was sitting at the National Research Center in, in Ottawa, in Canada. Uh, so this is considered to be the first uh, movie. In 1992, Colin Lowe, uh, same guy, uh, invented, uh, well, created the first IMAX movie that was shown at Venice Biennale. 2004, uh, Another guy, uh, Foldis, uh, created uh, the first movie drawn in 3D. So this is an animation using Sandy uh, from Softimage that was developed with the collaboration of the animation studio in Montreal. Uh, in 2009, we, uh, the two interactive studios were created, one in Montreal and one in Vancouver. Uh, this is the first project we did, which is basically a generative uh, uh, video clip for a band uh, in Montreal called Malajou. So, so interactive. Uh, I'm going to repeat some of what was stated by the two uh, person before me, uh, and that's very important. I feel uh, it was the first time I saw your presentation. 
and it's it's really every, everything is uh, essential to the interactive. Interactiveness is a new form of media, and you have to reshape the way you approach it and stop and leave behind all your uh, preconceived idea coming from the other media. Uh, so since 2009, uh, we produced more than 60 projects. Uh, we collaborated with newspaper broadcasters, magazine, festival, uh, museum, university, Nuit Blanche. Uh, we've uh, collaborated with over uh, uh, 40 different bodies or corporation or artists uh, with more than 100 fields of expertise, sometimes deep into the creative theme, sometimes just bringing them uh, uh, to help the project grow further. Uh, we've cr collaborated with 12 countries and uh, we think we're good. Uh, so this is us in Montreal uh, and this is them in Vancouver but most important is the creative people we work with. So at any time, uh, uh, what we do at the, uh, the NFB studios is really uh, work with about 15 to 20 teams of creators, uh, mostly from Canada, but sometimes from abroad. Uh, now, the interactive work. So I'm, I'm gonna go quickly over some of them and go deeper into uh, a number of them, uh, all of those that will be shown here during uh, the Biennale. Uh, the way uh, I'll go about it is I'll give you some key principles of how we work, how we approach creation when uh, playing with, with, uh, with the creative teams. So we consider ourselves techno-agnostic. What we mean by that is that we don't care that much about the technology. Uh, we've created web, mobile, tablet, everything written there. The main, the most important is the last one. It's, it's all connected. So it's of our time. This was addressed in the previous uh, presentation. Uh, all connected to the internet, but mostly all connected uh, between the people, the user and the person that designs the experience that people are gonna encounter, live with, and build their own story with the experience they're, they're facing. Uh, some quick projects, 2011. Uh, at that time, this will give you an idea of, uh, this is barcode, uh, of what we mean by techno-agnostic. So every project is built pretty much in the same way. Uh, barcode was, uh, the intention was, how do we acknowledge the presence and the meaning of all those objects surrounding us. Have we grown overwhelmed by those, all those objects? How can we give them a new meaning in this new age of technology? At that time, uh, cell phone, well, uh, intelligent uh, phones, smartphones, yeah. Uh, we're already three years in the making, four years, 2011. So it was pretty clear that Everybody that uh, owned a, 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 a cell phone uh, was able to scan. So the meaning we wanted to provide call upon us the technology because the technology was available. Uh, but then because it's about uh, reacting and creating new context for objects in order for, for us to better understand them or just nourish a, a new reflection uh, to our relation to objects. We also went in many public uh, spaces. Uh, this is the studio where we were testing. So you would take an object, put it on the, the pedestal that you see there, and then you, it will call one of the 100 films that were produced by 30 different film directors, each talking about one specific aspect of a specific object. Bear 71 that was made in uh, Vancouver. That snare had a breaking strength of two tons. I know I'm wearing a, a VHF collar and I have my radio frequency. They also gave me a number. Bear 71.
So Bear 71 is a, a, is a great example also. The, the initial intention was uh, the, the uh, director who proposed the idea uh, lives in uh, Alberta where the Banff National uh, uh, Park is situated. And uh, B B uh, Banff is the place where human and, and animals intersect in the most closest of way. There's people like being eaten by a, a bear almost uh, every year, just to, like casual uh, mis-encounter, we should say. Uh, and so it was all about tracking the bear. Because of that closeness, every animal in the park has a collier, like, like, like you saw in, in the movie. Uh, and so the question was, okay, it's the, if, if the animals could tell the story, what stories would they tell? And are we one of this animal? Because we are also tracking tracked, sorry, with our, our cell phones. So all the technology evolve uh, uh, from, that, from that reflection. Or we are all tracked. And what does that say? How do you build this into a, um, a body of work? Uh, Bear 71 is now available uh, through Google uh, Cardboard. Uh, if you want to, it's a VR, so that's one way we ported it into a new technology where you have a new experience of exactly the same content, but in a different context. Uh, other things we do also is we're not, we're not limiting ourselves when we go into a projects to uh, screens. Uh, uh, even though if we... Let's hear your voices. This is another project. Alors, j'ai décidé de vous parler de, de corruption. Euh, vous allez me dire, on est un peu tanné d'en entendre parler. C'est vrai, moi aussi, de discuter, de débattre et de décider ensemble. So this project, the general uh, idea was in 2013, there was municipal election in uh, Montreal. Uh, and we paired with uh, Quartier des Spectacles, which is another body of, of uh, people who create experience in the downtown area in Montreal. Uh, and we asked ourselves, okay, what is the speaker's corner of today amplified by technology? Uh, and we did a call, we put a, out a call for project and we got to this project with a, a company named uh, Moment Factory uh, that are like pretty well known all around the world. Um, and what we do is we created that space for a month and people could come and just shout out uh, uh, their wishes, dream about Montreal City. And all those words were gathered together and created this tapestry on the, on the, the building. And after the, the as, you, as going along, you could feel uh, the essence of what Montrealers uh, were looking for in their city. Um, another uh, project uh, that was created this time with Encuentro uh, in uh, Argentina uh, was a collaborative project where we built a team in Montreal and a team in Buenos Aires to uh, create a project. And the, the question was, what is the common ground for uh, young adolescents between, uh, young teenagers, sorry, between Montreal and Buenos Aires? And the answer was uh, violence, their relation to violence and how it is difficult to express uh, violence and oppression in, in our society. And we came up, I'm just gonna give you a glimpse of it. So basically, we asked them to shout uh, because we found out through the collaboration that how many of you have shouted in the last 48 hours? Yeah, still, we feel oppressed 
often, and we need to express that. So this is how the meaning came about, and the technology followed because it was between Buenos, uh, Buenos, uh, Argentina and Canada. We were really uh, we wanted to make sure that the access was there. Uh, so we we uh, choose all the well the web as the basic technology uh, where pretty one uh, pretty much anyone has access nowadays nowadays uh, so the technology came from that desire to connect and to create a, a, an everlasting uh, shout so meaning drives the technology this is pretty much how we work at the the, the interactive studios. Once you have a clear intention, a very clear creative inte intention, then you, you can move along. And to get that creative intention, uh, that was one of the uh, things that was repeated. You make sure that you have a, a key storyteller that with, has, has much experience and not only uh, understands how to tell a story, but all the dynamics, the psychology behind absorbing a story on the point of view of the user. Uh, another uh, person is the technology person. Uh, if, if you want to do something technology, you have, to, you have to, somewhat, to have someone in your base team that will be able to craft the technology to your needs to create the experience you want to create. And of course, UX designers and, 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 and visual artists that, that will come afterwards. But you, you really need a technologist in your team. I'm going to give you now a, an example of a project that's not working yet. <laughs> Sometimes that, that happens with technology, uh, which is the unknown photograph that's supposed to be uh, shown eventually when we'll figure out what's the problem with uh, the software. Uh, and this is the story of an old photo album from uh, World War I. Uh, so we had this album and uh, we wanted to tell a story. The person that came to us with this story uh, is a photographer. So it was all about photography, finding that unknown person and trying to understand how photograph of that time were, still had a meaning uh, in our relation to war today. So that was the, the, the driver of everything. Uh, at one time, uh, so at the beginning, sorry, uh, it was supposed to be a tablet experience where you would swipe the photos pretty much like you would develop a photo into a dark room in the old days and asking yourself different questions. And we weren't able to create that meaning. We weren't able with that stage of the project to, to actually tell the story that needed to be told. Uh, so we moved to another kind of technology, which is a gaming technology called Unity, uh, and cr try to gamify the experience in order to tell that story and to make sure that the user would relate and would understand that even if he's looking at old war photographs, uh, photographies, he's actually looking at wars today and our relation uh, towards true uh, photos uh, was not working either, uh, was not creating the, the, the power, the emotional power we were looking for. The photos were old photos and the creative team was kind of uh, discouraged or it was very hard for them to actually give a new meaning to those photos. They were only perceiving them as, as old photos that lost all their meaning. Uh, because we were already in unity at that time, uh, this is 2014, for, uh, yeah, end of 14, beginning of 15, uh, we decided just to try it in a DK1, DK1 Oculus uh, Rift device, just to see the effect it would create. Uh, so we did. Uh, and we created the unknown photograph that is now accessible. It will be, it will be released soon on the Oculus Store, uh, but it toured festival in the DK2, DK2 uh, version. Uh, so basically, because that technology of, of uh, immersiveness, of virtual reality, uh, you're suddenly able to portray the same photos in a totally different way. 
Uh, you're not bound by gravity, you're not bound by size. You can do pretty much everything. If you want to duplicate, replicate, put one in front, behind, uh, you, you do pretty much whatever you want to do. So I'm just going to give you a glimpse of uh, inside the goggles. So this is what it feels like when you're inside. You're going through the exactly the same photos, but because of the, the technology, we were capable of creating the story we wanted to do. Uh, we were mainly capable of, of giving a totally new regard on those same photos, uh, creating a profound emo emotional impact on the user. The other liberty we took at that time also is to fictionalize the documentary story in, or, in order to, to, uh, to speak uh, about today's war uh, with, with the context of the First World War. Uh, so if you have the chance to, to see it, I encourage you uh, to when it will be available, I don't know yet. Uh, and this is a pro uh, um, one last thing about this project uh, that's important is that at the bit we, we worked that project with a, a, a creative agency in Montreal called Turbulent. Uh, and at the beginning, they, they brought together an old way of working into the interactive uh, process. They come from what we, uh, we, we call convergent uh, funding in, in Canada, which is basically interactive that derivate from a TV program. So they add that kind of industrial mindset of, in, into creation. And before going into the VR, we had a long talk with them and we, we asked of them to create a four person team uh, gathering all the key uh, competency I, I'm talking about, I was talk to, uh, talking about, and we just uh, secluded them for six months and it gave what I just showed you. So they were able to craft some, something in, instead of building something. Uh, those kinds of collabor collaboration uh, make us grow all the time. Uh, I'm going to talk now about uh, Duna Track that you mentioned a little. Uh, this is one of the biggest collaboration we did so far uh, with the enemy, uh, of course, and I'm going to talk a little about after. Uh, it was created by Upien uh, under the direction of, of Brett Gaylor. Uh, we were in that project with Arte. Uh, and uh, Bayerisch Rundfunk, which is a, a German uh, media. And we had all sorts of partner, depending on, on the place in the world. Uh, how many of you know Do Not Track? Okay, so ba I'm gonna run the, the thing, but basically it's, how, it's a story of how when you go on the internet without knowing, knowing it, you just tracked all the time. And there's an economy behind that that generates millions and millions of dollars without you knowing it. We've all got our addictions. We've all got our routine. Mine is to wake up, get caffeine, and go online. A little bit on a desktop, a bit on my phone. Over the morning, I give away gigabytes of information about myself, and I give it without being asked. This is my name. This is where I live. This is me on Twitter, and these are my photos. So that's Brett's little girl. Uh, 
Brett, Brett Gaylor uh, is the, the creator. That's the guy you saw in the video. Uh, Brett has a, spe a specific background that is more and more common, but is still lacking in many ways in creative uh, uh, people in, in the interactive world. He's, he's from the internet. He works at the Mozilla Foundation. He codes. He knows pretty much everything about how the internet was built. He was building internet projects in 1996, uh, all connected. So he feels his matter in a, in a very special way that is essential to create those kinds of projects and to create those kinds of collaboration. Uh, because he masters his subject so well, he was able to include for each of the seven episodes uh, a, a different creator. Uh, so all the episodes were either created by uh, National Film Board, uh, uh, UPIAN, uh, Arte or Bayerisch Rundfunk. Uh, and each of them had a, a specific director and a specific set of team. Uh, and Brett was overseeing all of, uh, all of that as a director and we were uh, guiding the whole project uh, for producers who were in the, the creative team. Basically what the project does, it's exactly what internet does to you because that's, what, that's the story uh, Brett wanted to tell. Uh, to tell. So, um, if, if you enter something, uh, the system gets and records every action that you're going through uh, the, when, when going through the experience. Now that we've uh, between two sites. So it knows exactly where you come from, where you go after, and through that experience, it creates not only a, a, an understanding, but a feeling of, wow, when I go on my Google and I just input something, this is what's happening behind. So as you've seen in the, the this, as you've seen in the previous in, in that. What it is, let's define big data. Big data, big data is everywhere. The ongoing joke about big data is that it's more data than your organization knows how to deal with. So none of those films, this is not a film. This is, well, of course, this one is a film in order to, to show it to you, but when you go on their website, this is not a film. This is something that generates its images uh, you going along the way. So it's connected to, to different database uh, on the internet and it will track you, uh, it will know where you are. This is the, an extract of the fifth episode uh, that we created in Montreal. So this is just an example. So when you log into the episode, the episode, because it's connected to the internet, knows which kind of browser you have, the temperature outside, maps of your country, it locate, it, it's able to locate you exactly at your address, uh, and this is just regular to the internet, but we had to build a system that would make you feel that, and this is what this episode was about. Uh, and at the very end, it gives you a portrait, pretty much like the publicist that owned the internet, uh, make of you with all it is uh, false presumption and all those kinds of errors uh, that internet and liberties that internet uh, in which internet inter interprets you as a user which is the the basic question uh, one way to achieve that like I was uh, saying it is through collaboration and this one I don't know, I, we were maybe 80 something, but very early in the process of those big projects, what you have to do is bring everyone together. Uh, so for, for the producer <laughs> inside the room, you have to plan that in your budget. Uh, if you want people to have a common understanding and all drive along the same creative uh, uh, idea, you, you bring everyone together. So this was a session held pretty early uh, in Montreal where everyone in the project was attending. And I mean very much everyone. So you have Margot uh, at UPIAN. Margot, she was the leader of the, of the, the whole project with a key producer. Uh, you have Valérie in our studio. Uh, the Catherine, the girl next to her, is uh, overseeing all the social media in, uh, for the NFB. Uh, after that, it's the English social media because NFB is French and English. 
you have Brett, you have the uh, director of, of publicity and communication, uh, you have uh, the lawyers, uh, people from Arte. So it was the, like the filmmakers were there, everyone's there. Uh, it, it was a two day, very intense two day, but we feel having produced a couple of big projects like that, that if you don't create that collaboration on every level of the project, uh, you may find it very difficult to deliver a project at one point or another. Uh, and be, be those and just write everything, uh, collaboration, that's what we do. So the thing is really to uh, map everything you do, every re responsibility, uh, person responsible for this, for that, uh, final decision, uh, all this uh, fine detail notions of collaborations, you have to like be very upfront about it uh, to deliver those kinds of projects. You have to make sure not only people have the same understanding of everything, uh, but they also know to a specific thing, what is their specific role. And this is how col true collaboration suddenly sinks in to everybody because you know your role very well in the project, you're able to contribute to everybody else's role. And this is very uh, key to a, a big uh, collaborative project. Uh, at every stage, this is like the, the social media campaign that was all designed. So this is a, well, act the actual one is as big as what you see on the wall. So it's, it's very walls. Uh, then when you bring in all the different partners, so you have uh, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation that went in, uh, the Times uh, that was in. So it's, e it's easier at that time to get people in because everything is pretty clear for everyone else. Uh, so it makes room. I'm gonna drink water. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm gonna move to a, a like during those big uh, project. The reason it's so impor important to uh, have great basis of collaboration is because you're looking for an equation. Uh, you have to create a unique experience that will interface with the public uh, in a way uh, that it will. Uh, 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 drive them into the, your experience and uh, you, so to do that you have to make sure that the technology works uh, and there will be no flaw or if there are flaws there are minor flaw, flaws and they won't affect the overall uh, experience. So the way to do that as it was told also by the others uh, is you iterate. Uh, at every stage you have to build small prototypes of every aspect uh, to make sure that if you're, you're making mistakes, uh, you're making them now and not with when the big, the whole, the whole system is built. So you have to move along. This is why technologies are so important. It's really the dialogue between, the, it's the triangle we call it, uh, in order to make sure that the system at the very end is stable. Uh, the next project now, uh, which is very uh, has been into lots of iteration is the enemy project uh, so you got the feeling of the project Karim has been a war photographer at one point in his career he felt that his photos didn't have any uh, didn't have the impact he felt that what he, he, when he was on the field, uh, he had uh, unique encounters with all, each of those combatants, uh, and he, that's exactly what he wanted us to feel. The, the humanity he's facing when he's meeting each side. Um, so the, the project has uh, t two different uh, manifestation. The first one is, is the VR installation, uh, which where you encounter almost in a like a full body uh, experience uh, the presence of, of that enemy. Uh, the other one is an application that's released today, worldwide on the App Store, uh, which allows you through your cell phone to have kind of the same encounter 
uh, but in your own environment, be it a park near you, your your background, or uh, uh, yeah, well, your apartment or wherever you are. So this was a very tough project to uh, to manage into the different iteration and the collaborative process was also a, a challenge uh, at many points because because we were facing uh, a technology at some point that we didn't master uh, and even though we had like the the key technologists in the team uh, we we needed to test lots of of. Uh, of the stages of the, of the, of the project. Uh, and we decided to be inspired by how game designers develop their game. So in 2015, uh, with the first prototype, uh, we, we brought it uh, to uh, Storyscape. Uh, and this allowed Karim, this is uh, Karim and his team, so like all the, the key person, th this is the capturing crew that were going into three different countries to actually map the soldiers and bring them back into the experience. I'm um, just going to show you a couple of photos. So this is pretty much, they were going in hotel's room. So before actually going to the, the, the country, uh, we had to test all the technology that was needed to reproduce that. So we needed, we tested on ourselves uh, just to make sure everything was working, the sound was working, the Kinex uh, were working, the different cameras we were using were working. And this is in 2014. Uh, so the techn all technologies were pretty uh, rough and we even had to build uh, some of them. Uh, this is why again the technologist is essential to the, it has to grasp and understand the profound desire of, of the team to actually uh, create something that will do exactly what you need to do. Uh, so this is when we poured this image you've seen also. Uh, so they're rec recreated afterwards when they bring back the images. Uh, and it's a very long process. And if you want to create the sense of presence, I think there was like more than 100 iterations of each of the combatants to make sure we had the right skins, the gesture were okay. Uh, and we had to go back to Israel, uh, Israel Palestine to redo uh, everything. Uh, because the, the first prototype was missing all sorts of things that going through the creative process we knew we needed to create the experience we wanted to, to create. Um, if you ever get the chance to, it's now shown in Boston and if any of you goes in, in, uh, in the US uh, up until the December 31, but all the gestures uh, are exactly what the, the Karim asked the soldiers to do during the, the recording and the capturing of every aspect of them. Uh, this is in Paris, so this gives you an, an idea of the another part of iterations we needed to do. All those blue cameras are making sure that we know where every person in the, in the space is precisely in order for them not to collide. Uh, so this is like you start all those of course those cameras are expensive so before uh, having like 26 I think there was in, in Paris uh, you buy two and you start working with two uh, once it's, it works with two you buy a, another set of, of camera and you move along just making sure that you're not taking decisions that will cost you too much money at the at the very end. So this is what I mean by iteration. It's like you have to find every answers to your questions as soon as possible into the process. Uh, parallel to this thing is all the software that we needed to develop uh, in order to track the, per the the public in in the space. So this is an image. If you see the the spectre uh, just there. Uh, this is the, the system knowing exactly where everyone is in the space. Uh, so this is again a process of iteration. This is the final 
project where you see uh, 20 person, it's able to manage 20 person inside the room. But you can, you can uh, at the beginning, we were only managing one, per one person at a time, and person had like wires and everything. So at one point, we didn't know if the technology, uh, the wireless technology would come, uh, but we kept on doing the test anyway, and just hoping that the, the Wi-Fi technology would, would sync at the right moment in the project. This is another important thing into a team. Uh, it doesn't need to be in the closed team, but when you do those kinds of projects with uh, like uh, technology that are, aren't uh, accessible or that accessible yet, you associate with universities, our specialists, our friends of you are like very fond of technology and you just ask them, can you track? Everything's happening in that field. Uh, so this is very important in order uh, not to, um, uh, well, to encounter like in uh, w w very high walls uh, at some point in the experience. Uh, and like uh, I told a little before, you draw, like draw everything. It has. The drawing allows you to iterate in many ways, uh, bring in storyboard artists or people like that. It's, when you create something interactive, it's all about interaction and the, the interaction, uh, they go through, through your action, your eyes and your, your ears. So test all of that separately. Uh, this is how we work. Uh, this is the... Uh, the creative team in Boston that created the um, the app. So this is another thing when you do uh, both, you're working on two different technology with the same content and with the same uh, uh, with with the same story or experience you want to create. Uh, you have to create. As, as much lines as there is a, a different uh, platform and make sure they collaborate very uh, closely to one another. So we had in Montreal a version of everything that was happening in Paris, a small version, a very, very small version, but it allowed the, the app team to understand where the VR team was going and, and, and uh, influencing one another in asking themselves different questions, making sure that technological choice that were made in Paris were compatible with the technological, technological uh, choice we were making in Montreal. Uh, so I'm just gonna give you a, a view of the inside. When you're in the helmet, this is an early prototype, well, not so early prototype, but. So, especially when you're, you're playing with CGI uh, virtual reality, the, the systems, you, you have to master everything. So you have to actually be inside the goggle to make sure that it's not flickering or that nothing is happening that will compromise the, the easiness of, of the experience and, and what you mentioned uh, just before, the sickness uh, that some people may encounter. Uh, in the same way, um, uh, you have to, like, I don't know why I, I don't get the sound, but uh, we, we decided at one point that Karim will, will actually tell his story. So when you're in the experience, it's Karim uh, telling you his own story, his own relation to those soldiers, how we encountered them, and all the story of the conflict. And this is another part where, I mean, you, you drive a parallel uh, iterations. Like, we, we were acting, literally, like, in a room like this, uh, playing r different roles and having Karim saying his text to all of us and just like imagining what it would be inside the VR. And this is something that we found really helped us. So when you do VR, do it for real uh, and you'll see if it works. So you, d you just need five friends and you're, you're okay. So I'm gonna, the, the app now, uh, so you saw those images uh, earlier on, but basically the app is that wherever you are, you have the same soldiers. And this is another example of uh, iteration. This is a version uh, for the iOS 10, which is a soldier that looks a little flat, 
but because we didn't know if the AR kit w was coming in the, the, the next version, we decided to release it anyway. And we were following along, uh, following along the, uh, the evolution of the AR kit for the iOS 11 that is now, that this is what we're putting online today. Um, so it gives you a, a different uh, experience because you really feel... Amilcar Vladimir's enemy is behind you. So those are exactly the same content technologically wise that you have in the goggles, but we've ported them into the, the cell phone. So uh, just to amplify again the iterations, uh, like at the beginning you have something that doesn't all, oh, it's way, you have to sh uh, shrink every information you have without losing any of the quality. And you just learn this by doing it. There's no other way. Uh, I'm going to uh, give you now a glimpse of uh, another project that's uh, in the, um, the, show, uh, the showcase. It's way to go, so I'm going to finish uh, with this project, uh, which is uh, a team that embodies in many ways what I've been talking about uh, during the presentation. Uh, I'll, I'll, one thing is... It may not be apparent, but basically what you're looking at when you're going into a uh, way to go, all their interactions are, all built, are built as a musical instrument. And this is why we needed the keyboard. It's not only the mouse, but it's also the keyboard, W, E, space, and it allows you to play with it pretty much like you would play with a, a sampler, uh, a music sampler. Uh, and this came about uh, moving uh, into the creation. Uh, the team that you just, uh, the team here is like Vincent. So, uh, storyteller, programmer, musician, programmer, and uh, illustration artist uh, from right to left. Uh, and they just crafted the project inside the code. So, going along, they're finding shortcuts. Uh, to actually make the project works. Uh, the reason the, person, uh, the, the little persona are have square head is because we needed to find a way to, ca to camouflage uh, the, the camera that's, that's pretty much capturing everything. Um, so at one point we decided to, well, let's make it a part of the story and it became uh, the metronome. So it, it sets the beat of the music, but the, the, the bar you'll see if you experience it is the, the pull of the camera. Uh, so those are the kind. Uh, game design, again, this is all the design. So you feel like you're going into a straight line, but actually the program is just like turning you around in, in circle, uh, pretty much like a, a game design would do a 360 environment. Uh, they all work along in the, in the, uh, at the same space. Everything that's created in reality is, is then imported uh, through code into the, the, the build of, of the artwork. Uh, every, uh, the sky that moves, the texture, the colors, every, everything is, is crafted into the, the, the project as the project evolves. Uh, and they, they're the kind of team that are able to, uh, to create. This is a, so a music software that was created uh, for the experience uh, from the, the the ground up, moving along. And this, I'm just going to finish with two things because I, I feel it's important to say this here. So other things we do uh, in order to identify those, those teams and to create those collaboration opportunities is we send out massive uh, uh, concourse or uh, uh, call for project uh, around the world. So this is the first one we did, uh, which is called Aiku. Uh, we got people from different parts of, of the world, uh, a, a couple of projects coming from Santiago, uh, Buenos Aires, uh, and other places in, in South America. Uh, and the reason we're doing that is that we ask, before going into those gigantic projects, uh, are you able to master uh, something that lasts two minutes, that will be appealing, compelling, and that will, will work on a tablet? Uh, we've launched recently this one. I'm going to finish with this uh, because those 10 rules are pretty much, pretty much summarized 
our philosophy of, of creation. So it's a 60 second experience. It's about mobility. So you use the functionality of your device to create something, no apps. You have to build in the story, the, the, the meaning you want to create. And yeah, I'm gonna, this is not a film, it's interactive. Sound is often misused, so we amplify the, the sound importance. Well, this is a, a specific, usually we keep all the rights. And this is of most importance. It's like this is where crea creation ap happens. You follow your rules, but if the project, because of its meaning, because of its experience, because of, uh, of key interface design, you're allowed to break the rules all the time. You just have to know why you're breaking them and what it, what it brings to the creative process. So we're moving now in the downtown area in Montreal. This is the building uh, yesterday, I guess. Uh, yeah, yesterday. Uh, so if you come to Montreal, Give us a whack, we'll, we're always welcoming people, showing off the, the different uh, uh, studios and, and stuff, and just discussing creation uh, with anyone who wants to discuss it with us. Thank you very much.